Hey everybody, Mr. Murphy here. I'm going to go through chapter 6.5, which is all about the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. Similar to the respiration section, I'm going to stick to what the book is providing uh, and kind of go through it quickly. Uh, there's a separate video which will uh, dig into a little bit more about what we specifically have talked about and what we focus on in AP Bio. So for photosynthesis, it's broken down into two sections, light-dependent and then what we call the Calvin cycle, or sometimes you hear it referred to as the light-independent side of photosynthesis. All of this is happening inside of the chloroplast, which is inside of plant cells. You have many chloroplasts inside of a plant cell, and then within that chloroplast you have many of these thylakoids stacked up in what's called granum, uh, or grana is the plural. And then the Calvin cycle is happening in the stroma of the chloroplast, which is the cytoplasm region outside of the thylakoids. So first off, to understand what's happening here, we have to know a little bit about where the energy is coming from, and that is light, which I think we all know. But um, a little bit more detail on that. Light is, uh, is really embodied by these particles known as photons. And a photon is um, a energy source. It is energy being emitted by the, um, in the case of the sun, by the uh, reactions happening between atoms inside of the sun which are under immense pressure and immense heat and they release this energy and uh, on our planet it is bombarded continuously by photons from the sun and plants have adapted this mechanism to harness the energy that's carried by those photons and turn it into something useful for them which is the stored up chemical energy in glucose so when photons um, hit a electron or hit matter they basically are able to impart that energy to it and so in the case of electrons by adding these photons we we elevate them essentially to an excited state uh, state it's not literally elevated it's not the, the electrons here and it jumps up here it's just that it suddenly has this kinetic energy that it is able to uh, have characteristics that enable it to do things that might not ordinarily happen in a stable sort of resting state of the electron not that electrons rest they're zipping around at you know a fraction of the speed of light themselves but uh, hopefully that makes some sense so photons come in a variety of uh, energy levels and uh, what we focus on here on Earth is the visible light spectrum. And to just understand a little bit more about why that is, like why don't plants you know, harness X-rays and, and gamma rays, um, these are photons which carry simply too much energy. And so it would not be sustainable for a life form to really be capturing these, or at least not on Earth where, where life is adapted to um, sort of this medium level of light. We're bombarded with ultraviolet. Um, there's some cosmic rays and gamma rays and things, but we're largely protected by our atmosphere from that. Uh, and so plants are really dealing within this visible light spectrum where the ultraviolet's a little bit too much energy to really chemically make use of, and the infrared and everything below it is similarly just not enough energy to do something meaningful with. And so pigments are these molecules which actually absorb these wavelengths in the visible spectrum. And chlorophyll is a, is a pigment which absorbs blue and red light and uh, reflects green light, which is why plants are green. So the absorption spectrum is, is uh, light energy that's absorbed, um, whereas the action spectrum is the biological activity against the wavelengths that it gets exposed to. And so we can see some visualizations of this, and the textbook goes into a little bit more of it. It's not particularly relevant to sort of the level that we're supposed to be understanding this in AP Bio, but it can be pretty interesting just to sort of uh, look a little bit more closely at how the absorption of different wavelengths um, correlate to sort of what's happening inside of the plant. And certainly an example like this could be taken from the AP uh, or on the AP test, but it would be, you know, well explained sort of what the context of it is as it relates to the more standard topics of photosynthesis that we're looking at. Um, in plants, we have two primary types of chlorophylls, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, which absorb slightly different wavelengths. And then we have a whole bunch of accessory pigments. And just like everything in bio, it goes a lot further than that. Of course, you can probably uh, think of different examples of plants that have different colorations and different uh, characteristics than your typical just like green maple tree. Um, and of course, that is very much a thing and related to the adaptations of those plants to their specific environment and how they're able to capture the wavelengths that they need to do the process of photosynthesis. Uh, within the chloroplast, we have the thylakoids stacked up, and within the thylakoid membranes, we have these chlorophyll molecules within these proteins, and we refer to these as, um, as the photosystems. 
So here's a chlorophyll molecule just to give you a little bit of a chemical understanding of sort of what it looks like. And essentially its uniqueness is that acting as a pigment it's able to absorb these photons and in doing so is absorbing the energy along with them. Now in the case of uh, chlorophyll it's able to then react uh, with nearby molecules and basically send electrons off um, these excited ener uh, energetic electrons to do things within the, the, the membrane. And so here you can see just a little sort of uh, reaction view of this where you have this chlorophyll and you have nearby acceptor proteins um, or acceptor molecules for the electron that's going to be donated to them. And so when that chlorophyll gets hit with those photons, it loses an electron and it becomes positive itself keep that in mind because we have to restore an electron back to it um, and it donates that electron to the acceptor which is now able to pass that electron along and, and utilize the high energy of it to conduct different experiments or not experiments reactions um, in the case of um, photosynthesis uh, the the one location where we see these electrons end up or actually the location we see these electrons end up is in the um, in the reduction of NADP plus into NADPH. So NADPH is where that electron is stored up, it is gained there, so that is a reduction. Um, ATP, meanwhile, is going to be produced through chemiosmosis, as we know that the passage of these high energy electrons also is, is um, providing energy for proton pumps, which are going to be moving hydrogen ions across the membrane and ultimately allowing ATP synthase to do its job. And so here we can see uh, a view of this where uh, photosystem 2 becomes excited by the light, sends off a high energy electron through a series of proteins that um, ultimately produce the ATP. Now this is really skipping the whole process of pumping hydrogens and then those hydrogens will ultimately through chemiosmosis move through ATP synthase which then generates the ATP. But this is a good way to just sort of simplify it. The electrons from photosystem 2 ultimately are providing the energy to produce ATP and then those electrons end up at photosystem 1 which is good because photosystem 1 is losing electrons to be uh, reducing NADP plus into NADPH. So um, photosystem 1 gets its electrons back from photosystem 2. Photosystem 2 gets its electrons from water. So plants need water for photosynthesis because water is an electron donor. Much in the way that oxygen is an electron acceptor in cellular respiration and becomes water. So again we can see the sort of opposite parallels between these things as they uh, are sort of systematically chemically opposites of each other. So uh, I've already kind of gone over this, but photosystem 1 is ultimately producing the NADPH. Photosystem 2 is providing the chemical gradient to produce ATP. And uh, that kind of goes into a little bit more detail just about the excitement of the chlorophyll and how that electron then gets passed on to another molecule, which changes its shape, which changes its shape, so on and so forth. We've seen that sort of a, a metabolic pathway before. And um, there are some special circumstances, such as cyclical electron transport, where you have certain plants that maybe don't have photosystem 2, and so they, they actually will recycle the electrons back to photosystem 1. Um, these are not things which we need to be aware of right now. We'll talk maybe a little bit about them when we get to evolution and how um, this different process offers an adaptation, a, a way for certain plants to survive in certain conditions. Um, but you can see a little bit of what that looks like. That's going to be it for chapter 6.4. So in the next section, we'll see the Calvin cycle, which is what we're doing with these energy carriers, ATP and NADPH. Thanks.